the two atoms that are joined together in a water molecule, electrons are shared. Actually, I'm going to kind of turn you guys loose here in a minute to kind of look at how electrons might be shared. Um, the, the deal with sodium chloride, table salt, is actually an electron is transferred. And then we talked about this idea of electronegativity. And the symbol for electronegativity is like that X. Electronegativity, I know it's hard to read, but basically it's, it's, it's when the two atoms get together and look at each other's valence electrons, okay? Electronegativity is one atom saying, hey, dude, I want a lot of electrons to myself, okay? And so actually that's what we're going to, I'm going to, like I said, kind of turn you loose on that idea. So we already did this slide talking about what electronegativity is, but for the exercise I want you guys to do here in a minute, you're going to want to refer to these numbers. These are actually the electronegativity values. These are sometimes they're called column values. The higher the electronegativity, like 4.0, that means fluorine's like, dude, give me all your electrons, okay? This low electronegativity of, um, is it cesium? I get cesium and cerium mixed up. Of, um, so that low electronegativity is like, dude, go ahead and take my valence electrons, okay? Um, so I kind of want to get to get a sense of that. Now, if electron entirely jumps ship, okay, which happens when you have a metal like cesium and a non-metal like fluorine when electrons entirely jump ship, then you end up with um, a positively charged cation. The metal is positively charged, and the thing that accepts electrons, the non-metal, is negatively charged anion, and then they like... There are different charges, and we get an ionic bond, like electrons transferred. So we actually did this then. This is kind of a review, okay? So the kind of the threshold for an electron jumping ship is if the high electronegative one, like fluorine, okay, if it's 4.0, if it's like one, at least 1 1.7 units higher, then electron will entirely be transferred, okay? Anything beyond that? And actually, electron isn't going to be transferred, but the dude with the higher electronegativity is going to run around with what we call a partially negative charge. And the example we actually looked at was water. And if you look at the, um, we talked about this a little bit after class, too, for um, up here with Grace. But if you look at a water molecule, okay, okay, you calculate these electronegativity differences, okay, they're not 1.7. Um, if you look back at that table a minute ago, oxygen definitely has a higher electronegativity value than hydrogen. Okay, so just for that fact, oxygen has a higher electronegativity value. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity value. That means actually that thing is running around with a negative charge. Not entirely negative, but actually we use a lowercase uh, delta, and we usually just kind of put, it looks like an S with a little extra loop. Okay, that means, that means partially negative and partially positive, partially positive, okay? So just a little bit. And actually, what I'm talking about there is we have a polar molecule. What does polar mean? Well, if somebody polarizes a situation, that means they basically, the group separates into agrees and disagrees if somebody has a polarizing personality, okay? So um, um, if a molecule is polarized, then basically it kind of has electrons over here, the high electronegativity atom, and less electrons over here. So this is partially negative, this is partially positive. Okay. So um, I believe this is probably a figure from a different textbook, I think. Um, Okay, so for example, if we, do you guys remember that there are, did we talk about the elements that like always go around with a buddy, like they're, they're what we call diatomic elements? No, we talk about um, There are some elements like um, hydrogen, okay, the symbol for hydrogen is H, and actually the thing about hydrogen is it's one, a, a special element that actually, I'm going to put a little subscript to there. Hydrogen is an example of an element that wants to run around with one of itself. <laughs> it gets lonely, okay? There actually are, on the periodic table, there are seven elements like that, and I'll go ahead and give them to you. The, and they spell out the name, like the German name Hofbernickel. 
So there's hydrogen. What's the symbol for ox? I mean, what element is oxygen? Or, sorry, the O is the symbol for oxygen. It's also diatomic. Um, F is the symbol for what? Fluorine. Fluorine. Yep, Fluorine. and that's also diatomic. Um, then we have Br. What's that the symbol for? Bromine. Bromine. That's also diatomic. Um, the N is nitrogen. Um, I is iodine. iodine. Yep, very good. And Cl is chlorine. chlorine. Yep, very good. Perfect. And do you see the name Hofbernickel there? I don't know. That's how I learned it. Hofbernickel. Mm -hmm. There's seven of them. Hofbernickel. So that little subscript two means that actually in nature they like to be buddied up. Okay. So if we were going to take something like that, we could make this a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen atom that are bonded together. And by golly, if we were to do the math, the electronegative value of a hydrogen. Sorry, Greg. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. It's two point one. Okay, so basically, remember we did this before, we have um, electronegativity is 2.1, electronegativity is 2.1, so electronegativity difference is zero, exactly. So delta chi electronegativity difference is zero. Yep, you got it. So in that case, actually, um, they can share electrons, but they're shared equally. Um, this one right here, let's go ahead, for example, I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm going to make this a carbon monoxide molecule. So I'm going to pick a red color. So I'm going to put the letter C over here for that atom. Oops, nope. I think I better put... Maybe carbon monoxide. Which one's higher electronegative? Yeah. I put I better put the O, oh, I'm gonna put the oxygen atom over here. Sorry guys. Oxygen atom over here and the carbon atom over here. Carbon monoxide. And if you look up the value for oxygen. Thank you. Oxygen is three point five. Mm -hmm. And the pot the electronegativity value for carbon is 2.5. Cool. So then the, the delta chi or difference in electronegativity, I'm just going to go ahead and say 3.5 minus 2.5. That's 1. Yep. So on that scale I gave you, that actually corresponds to polar. Yep. That's just a polar molecule. Perfect. And I think we did NaCl. I'm not, not going to do it here again. But notice for NaCl, if I'm going to make this NaCl, then I better put the Na where the little blue ball is. Does that make sense? Na. Why? Because it's low electronegativity. It's basically going to say, oh, you can have my electrons. And the chlorine has a high electronegativity. And I'm not going to do it here, but actually in a minute you guys are going to do some of this. And actually, that difference, I think we looked at on Wednesday, is more than 1.7. I know here they don't go with 1.7. They go with 2, but I don't know. I still like 1.7. Okay. So this, we're going to need to go in pairs. Which I'm so you guys are kind of... Make a group of. I know. Okay, so, yep, go ahead and jot down this assignment is due. And you need one of these. So the 1.7, 2.0, 1.5 is kind of ballpark. Wow, I left out a lot of blanks there. Well, 
Those are what I call hand cramps. Good job. Okay. So one more topic I want to talk about is this one. And this topic only has to do with ionic, ionic compounds. So um, ionic compounds have a metal, right? Um, ionic compounds form because actually you end up with a cation. The metals are cations, and the nonmetals are anions. Now, I just want to focus on a particular type. The word bi in binary, or I should say the part of the word bi in binary is like a bicycle, so two. I only want to talk about where you basically have two things joined together, okay? And I kind of just want to talk about just single elements joined together, a metal and a nonmetal joined together. So here's the deal. When you end up with a repeating unit of an ionic compound, remember we call that, we don't call it a molecule, we call it a formula unit, okay? When you come up, like, for instance, we said um, the other day, when you talk about molecular compounds or covalent compounds and ionic, we said that actually molecular compounds, the unit is a molecule, and we said the unit in an ionic compound is a formula unit. Okay. Okay. So a formula unit of an ionic compound needs to be neutral. So um, I'll kind of show you what I mean by that coming up. So when you write something like, and the, everybody's favorite example of ionic compound, we've already used it before, okay, NaCl is an ionic compound, it's table salt. NaCl is an ionic compound, it's table salt. We don't say that, um, we don't write the charges there. So, and I guess I need to remind you that we talked about charges. So, for instance, if I like write 1A, 2A, and then I have the Bs, which is kind of that little part, and then I write, I skip those, and I go 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A. Do you recognize those are group numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. On your note cards, I want to tell you this morning, on your note cards, what I would do is I would write a plus 1 over 1A, and some of you already have. I would write a plus 2 over 2A, okay? And then I would write a plus 3 over 3A. And then I usually, what, how I think of it is I go clear over to 7A and I go backwards. So over 7A, I would write a minus 1. And over 6A, I would write a minus 2. And over 5A, I would write a minus 3. So those green numbers are the charges that those sort of atoms form. And we, we already talked, looked at why that is, and it has to do with valence electrons. And we said that these guys over here, these metals, actually kick off those electrons. Like they kick off one electron, become plus one. Kick off two electrons, plus two. Three electrons, plus three. So four would be like a neutral? Four can actually kind of go either way. So I usually don't, don't put anything it. over that. Yeah. I don't, I don't put anything for sure. 4A is carbon and silicon and germanium and um, tin. And, and we don't use that because those are noble. And B, we don't use because, the, yeah, they can kind of do multiple things. And in, the eight thing? Oh, the eight? Oh, the 8A, yeah, because they don't do anything. Very good, yes. These guys, they're neutral. They don't like to lose or gain electrons because they actually already have eight. They are happy. Okay. Yep, they don't react. So just for kicks, let's uh, look at our example of table salt. And sodium is actually under 1A. So sodium actually forms a plus 1 charge because it's 1A. Chlorine is 7A. So chlorine actually forms a minus 1. See how that works? Okay. So... Um, when we write NaCl as the formula for sodium, for, for table salt, okay, basically, do you see where, if I go ahead and say I have a plus one and a minus one, do you see where this thing is neutral? It basically, it's a wash, okay? That's what I mean by neutral. And I'll kind of show you how, how to get those. Does that make sense? And usually we go with the, 
with the cation, underneath the cation, I'm going to see, even say metal, because the ones we're sticking with are just pure elements. So it's the metal first, and then it's the nonmetal. Remember the word anion is negatively charged, the word cation is positively charged. For me, the way I remember cation is positively charged is I look at the T in cation and I see a plus. I don't know. Um, the anions are negatively charged. So, all right. So we're going to actually, I want to get a little bit of practice at coming up with the formula for an ionic compound. And then I also want to be able to kind of name it, not kind of to name it. So um, a lot of times if I would ask you, what do you call table salt? Well, first, a lot of people say it's NaCl, table salt. And actually, you might tell me it's sodium chloride, and you would be right. So if we just kind of stick with that example, NaCl, okay, how do we name that compound? Well, we give it a first name, sodium, and we give it a last name. And the last name, and I'm going to kind of give you some, some practice of this, but instead of saying cl sodium chlorine, okay, we actually, for the, the non-metal, we kind of lop off the end of it and put I-D as in dog, I-D-E. That's what we do for all of those. So instead of chlorine, it's chloride. That's it, sodium chloride. So it has a first name and a last name. Okay. So we okay with that? Ish? Plus or minus? So again, I'm just, we're just kind of getting a flavor for this. If you, if you take another uh, course in chemistry or if you dabble even further, you'll learn more about this. But I kind of want to limit our discussion. So for instance, sodium has one valence electron. It's a 1A, one valence electron. It forms a plus one charge. It's going to kick off that electron to form a plus one charge. Sulfur, can you see the six around sulfur? The 6A, OK. And so it wants to actually, at the top, we said um, 6A, we put a negative 2, right? Plus 1, plus 1. Is that kind of right? So actually, those sodiums kick off their electron. They donate it to the sulfur. They can become a plus 1, and the sulfur becomes a minus 2. OK, and there you go. So kind of visually speaking, can you see where down here at the bottom, okay, that does it look neutral to you? Because we have two pluses and we have uh, one, two minus. So actually, this is neutral. Of course, to write that, we would have to write Na2S. While I'm here, I want to introduce you to the crisscross method. I love the crisscross method, OK? So let's just say somebody said they didn't give you this. They didn't tell us. But they said, I want you to combine sulfur. Sorry, I want you to combine sodium and sulfur. Well, the crisscross method says I would go to the periodic table. I would write Na for sodium. I would see what charge it forms. And I would have a plus 1 at the top of my 1A. And I would write plus 1. Then I would go to the periodic table and find sulfur. And sulfur is 6A. I would have a negative 2 there. So I'm going to put negative 2 here. And here's the crisscross method. So I call these the, the component ions. These are just the ions that I want to combine. So according to the crisscross method, very descriptive, you take this one up here with the sodium. And that's how many sulfurs you need, or sulfides you need. You take this two right here, the charge of the anion, and that's how many sodiums you need. Okay, so I could rewrite, this would be a two here, 
This would be 1 here by the crisscross method. So I can rewrite that as Na2S1. I'll go ahead and put a 1 there, Na2S1, because I got it from the crisscross method. Does the 1 need to be there? No. Can it be there? Sure. Okay, so that's crisscrossing, making a neutral compound. I like it. Okay? All right. Here's another example, magnesium and um, chlorine. Magnesium and chlorine joining together. And I already have the, um, the formula for you. But if we were going to kind of, if we didn't have this formula, okay, but we knew we wanted to join magnesium and chlorine, I write magnesium and chlorine down. Then I go to the periodic table. I find magnesium. It's 2A, so I put a plus 2 there. I find chlorine. It's clear my 7A. I have a minus 1 at the top of 7A, so I put a minus 1, and then I crisscross. So the number of magnesiums I need are 1. The number of chlorines I need are 2. So Mg1Cl2. That's exactly right. Crisscross. So you guys already have the answers to all these, I think, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So um, this slide uh, might be helpful. I don't know if you want to put this on your test or not. I'm not sure. But you recognize these are all the nonmetals that pick up electrons and form anions. Okay. And you maybe recognize, for instance, instead of nitrogen, okay, instead of nitrogen, okay, you basically lop off the end somehow, nitrogen, nitride, okay, instead of fluorine, fluoride. All right, here we go. Let's do some. So, um, go ahead and work ahead if you want to. Meanwhile, I'm going to kind of just mumble through some answers up here, right? So this is the way I would do these. Um, potassium, see this is where you're, you have a list of elements that you need to know the name with the symbol because the periodic table doesn't have the name but it has the symbol. So the symbol for potassium is K. K. I always think special K. Yep, symbol for potassium is K. The symbol for chlorine is Cl. Very good. And then what you need to do is find those on the periodic table and find what ion they what you put at the top. So potassium, we put a plus one. And chlorine, we must have put a negative one. Okay. And then let's go ahead and crisscross. So the number of Potassiums we need is one. The number of chlorines we need is one. So I'm getting K1Cl1. And do you need the ones? No. But can you put them? Sure. And then the last thing I want to do for each of these is to give it a name. So the name of the metal first. So it's just simply potassium. What color do I want? And I can never remember how to spell some of these, so I'm going to spell it that way this time. Potassium. And then instead of the word chlorine, I have to change it to IDE somehow. So it's chloride. Potassium chloride. And you're done. The two things I wanted you to be able to do for each of these is to come up with the formula. There's the formula. And to come up with the name. So let's do the next one. Um, what's the symbol for aluminum? AL. AL, yep. Let's go ahead while we're at it. Find AL on the periodic table. Wow, I'm seeing it over under the, uh, it's, it's past the Bs, um, and it's 3A. So the top of 3A, we put plus 3. So I'm going to put a plus 3 there. 
Um, sulfur, if I find sulfur on the periodic table, what's the symbol for sulfur? S. I'm going to find it on the periodic table, and I'm finding it under, um, looks like um, 6A, so we have a negative 2 up there. Oh, we're getting a little bit of excitement here. Okay, so now if we crisscross, it looks like the number of aluminums I need is 2. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and write that. I'm going to put AL2. The number of sulfurs I need is 3. Sulfur 3. And to name this thing, I'm going to just give it the name of the metal, aluminum, aluminum. Don't worry, if, you, if you're a bad speller, um, I've seen it all. <laughs> so you have to be kind of close to this right spelling, okay? So aluminum, and it's not sulfur, it's sul sulfide, yes. Sulfide. Awesome. The next one, lithium. I don't know if I want to do all these. Yeah, we'll do all these. Lithium, uh, symbol is Li. We find it on the periodic table under 1A. So that must mean it's a plus 1 charge. Uh, bromine is Br. And we find that um, is one of our halogens under 7A. So in 7A, we had a negative 1. And so this crisscross is kind of straightforward. It looks like if I crisscross, I need one of each, don't I? So it's Li1, Br1. It's almost like a score, right? And to name it, its first name is going to be lithium. And not bromine, what's its last name? Bromide. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Let's just do one more. There's three more there, but we're kind of losing on, running out of steam here. Let's see, which one do we want to pick? Let's do the cesium one. The cesium one? Okay. So cesium is um, CS. Okay, there's cesium and cerium. Why did they do that? Cesium is CS. So CS. And it's a 1A, so we're going to put plus 1 for that. And iodine is, um, the symbol is I. And it's a 7A, so there's a negative 1 <coughs> over that one. So it looks like if we crisscross, again, we're going to just want one of each. So it's CS1, I1. And the name is cesium, just the name of the metal. And the last name, and instead of iodine, it's IO. Iodide, yep. That's it. Very good. Okay, so one more then assignment. Um, page 361, but not all of them. So 361, sorry, number 18. Page 361, number 18. And I don't want you to do all of them. I just want you to do A, B, D, and E. Page 361, number 18, A, B, D, and E. And then the next page, page 362, number 28. And for number 28, they're asking you, is this an example of a molecular compound or an ionic compound? And my hint was look for the metal. And I'll go ahead and finish that thought. If, you, if there is a metal, then it's an ionic compound, ionic CPD, if there is a metal. Just kind of like <laughs> with this. What, calcium sulfide, right? Let me put it up here. All right. Awesome. Have a great weekend.